Hello, I'm Judith Joseph, and I'm a senior solutions architect here at AWS. Today, I would like to show how to implement a scalable shared framework for retrieval augmented generation, RAG, based workflows. Organizations of all sizes and types are harnessing large language models, LLM, and foundation models to build generative AI applications. These powerful LLMs are trained on large volumes of data and use billions of parameters to generate original output. The outputs from LLMs are used for tasks such as answering questions, text summarization, translating languages, and completing sentences. So the LLM is a powerful technology, but also has its limitations, such as their training data is static, and the LLM has a cutoff on its knowledge. The other limitations include presenting false information when it does not have an answer, presenting out-of-date or generic information, and providing answers from non-authoritative sources. To address these concerns, as well as to optimize the output of the large language model, say for example, by providing an organization's internal knowledge base, we use the process of retrieval augmented generation. And we do so without retraining the model. Using this process of RAG, we can now create a bot that answers users' questions in various contexts by cross-referencing authoritative knowledge sources. Now, how do we make such an end-to-end -end RAG workflow scalable? First, we need to make the components of this architecture that handles the workload in a modular and flexible manner by being able to scale horizontally and vertically to meet demand by providing the easy means to integrate with the organization's knowledge base, such as Kendra or vector database documents, and so on. By providing the management and life cycle of the data so that the information is current and up to date. By providing an easy deployment of all the resources needed for this workflow through a CI-CD pipeline. Then we monitor the various metrics of such an implementation and optimize it further based on the results. Finally, through security measures such as encryption, access controls, and authentication mechanisms to protect data and ensure compliance with regulations throughout the RAG workflows. Now that we have introduced the concepts of RAG and how to make it scalable, let's take a quick look at a visual of this workflow. Say I'm the user posting a query along with prompts or instructions. The query is first sent to the knowledge or data sources to search for the relevant information. Then once we retrieve the information, we pass the prompt, query, and the enhanced context to the large language model, be it Bedrock or the large language model hosted in SageMaker for a question answering task. Now, let's talk about a real-world implementation through a solution called Generative AI Application Builder on AWS. In the next few slides, I will give a brief overview of the solution, show the landing page and its contents, and then we will see a quick demo. This is the landing page for the Generative AI Application Builder on AWS solution in the Solutions Library. Through this library, AWS offers purpose-built services, ready-to-deploy software packages, and customizable architectures with instructional information to rapidly solve business challenges. These solutions are built by AWS and the partners to address specific industry cross-industry and technology use cases. This is a production-ready solution that helps the customers to rapidly develop and deploy the Gen AI applications. This landing page has the architecture diagram for the RAG workflow, as well as the dashboard that manages all the RAG use cases, an implementation guide 
a step-by-step -step instruction manual, if you will. And we have some metadata over here with links to the open source code, cost estimates, and the one-click deploy button. So when I click the launch in the AWS console button, it takes me to the cloud formation in the AWS console directly. And the template is over here. So I select next. I give a name for this stack, saying use case stacks. and provide the admin user email. And if you would like to enable the VPC, you can select so and all the information associated with it. I'm going to select next, give permission to start deploying the resources and click submit. During deployment, you can track the deployment of all the resources in the events tab. And once the deployment is complete, you can get the URL for the dashboard in the outputs tab. I have previously deployed a deployment dashboard So at the end of that deployment, I have a CloudFront URL over here. Now, when the stack was deploying, you would receive an email with temporary credentials from Cognito. The first time you log in to this deployment dashboard, you can change the credentials and give in your own password. Now, as you can see, the deployment dashboard is the place where I manage all my use cases. So this could be an IT help desk use case, and this could be a customer-facing chatbot. And I can have n number of use cases over here. So this is the deployment dashboard. And let me take you through the steps of how to create a new use case. I'm taken to the visit UI. So here, the first use case type is text. And the use case name is IT Help Desk. And you can give an email address, which is optional. Otherwise, you can log into this UI with the admin credentials. And you will be provided with an option to choose to deploy the use case within a VPC. I'm selecting no. In the visit UI, you will be given an option to choose the model provider, both first party and third party models from Bedrock, as well as you can use the large language models at SageMaker endpoints. If you choose these third party models, you will need to provide an API key. Over here, you will provide the input schema that your model expects. And it depends upon the model that you have chosen. So go through the model documentation. And these are the placeholders over here. The information about all these fields is given to in the pane over here. The location of the LLM's generated string response within the output is provided here. Added to that, you can adjust the model temperature anywhere between 0.1 to 1. A value closer to 0.1 would result in the mo model not hallucinating a lot. You can provide the prompt over here. These are specific instructions to the model. If you do not provide one, a default prompt will be provided for you. Now, advanced model parameters like maximum tokens, stop sequence, and so on can be provided as key value pairs, and the data type can be chosen here. And for the SageMaker endpoint, you will have to have a large language model deployed using SageMaker Jumpstart, and you will provide the name over here. So I have previously deployed a model, 
and I will give the model same model name over here. So the output path is given and I select next. Now you were given a choice to have retrieval augmented generation. If you select no, all the user queries along with the prompts are sent to the large language model directly. If you select yes, you can select the knowledge base. In, the, in this case, it is Kendra. If you have an existing index, you can select yes and provide the index ID. And if you select no, you can provide the index name over here and a new Kendra index will be created for you. And in these additional Kendra options, you can choose between the developer or enterprise edition. Developer edition is for proof of concepts and enterprise edition is mostly used for production workloads. You can also add the query capacity or storage capacity over here. And in this page, you can review and edit all the options that you have chosen so far. And then you will click on the button, Deploy Use Case, which would start a stack creation in CloudFormation. At the end of the stack creation, the deployments are managed over here in the Deployment Dashboard. And I select the particular deployment with the uh, inference endpoint and all the parameters that I've chosen so far. And if I want to select the UI so that I can query the large language model, which would get the context from Kendra and uh, format the response and give me the responses. So this is the UI at the end of the deployment. And here is the default prompt. So I, I'm going to use the default prompt and ask a question, what is spot instance? And here I have received the response from the large language model. The enhanced context and the relevant information was obtained from Kendra. And the user's query, my query, along with the prompt and the documentation that was retrieved from Kendra is passed on to the large language model. And we see the response over here. In this case, I had provided information about EC2 instances. And the information was indexed by Kendra. You can add any number of data sources that are provided for you through Kendra. In this demo, I had used information about EC2 instances stored in S3 as a data source to Kendra. You can add the data sources available through Kendra to add and index your content and provide it as a knowledge base to the chosen large language models. There are more resources in the AW Solutions library. The one that I showed was the Generative AI Application Builder on AWS. And there is another solution link that I've provided over here. This one helps you to query your large language model in natural language and then convert it to SQL syntax and query your database. Now that we have shown you a production ready use case, I encourage you to follow other solutions in the solutions library. Thanks for listening.